Hey there. I see you have questions. Ow. I see you have a lot of questions about Sims. Sims 4 in, per in particular. The stutter? So I'm gonna try to answer them all for you. I've written down every question I've found online in regards to me that people ask me. So I'm gonna try my best to answer them all today. Let's go. I'm gonna try my best to answer all of the questions you had about Sims 4 since I am a self-appointed Sims 4 connoisseur. Technically Sims in general, because I've technically been playing this game since I was like, 11. I'm gonna try my best. Let's go. First up, what laptop do I use? I have two laptops. I cannot remember the specs right now, so I will put them both here. The one that I'm on in my room right now is my MSI. That's as far as I know. And then the other one is a Razer, I, th I think. And I'll put all the information for them on the screen. Would I recommend my laptops? Yes and no. They both have pros and cons. I think the Razer does have a pretty consistent overheating problem. And for some reason it struggles to stay connected to my internet more than my MSI. I don't know if that's a network issue directly or because you know it works on one. So I'm not really sure what that is. I think that they're kind of expensive. So I do think you could probably find cheaper alternatives to gaming computers or gaming laptops. I did have a, a PC, but it was a pre-built PC and it just became um, kind of irritating to me. So I kept it in storage for a long time, but I didn't want to throw it away because it wasn't I think I just had too much stuff on it compared to like someone that would probably use it and play like normal sized games. I have a gajillion files on my Sims game. So I gave it to my boyfriend and he loves it now and he uses it. So I can put the specs to that because I did have that for a while. I'll ask him for them. Can I share my CC folder? Nar. But not because I don't want to, but because it's directly against, I believe like most creators terms of use if you download their content. Sorry. Do I use an external drive? Yes, several. I have one huge external drive. I'll put the info here, which I have like, it's like one that sits on your desk and I think it's like 10 terabytes and it's literally just full of Sims content. It's just all my backups for like the last two years. I use it to store like how I back up my game when there's an update, all of that. It really does take up that much space. So 10 terabytes really was worth it. You do not need a 10 terabyte hard drive. You really are good with probably just even one terabyte or even less than that, like 500 gigs. I think you'd be fine. I'm just ridiculous and I'm a hoarder and even down to hoarding content and my Sims game from 2022 is on that file. So yeah. But I do also have smaller SSDs. I just keep those like I have like the little Whoops, this is my MacBook and I have this exact setup for my gaming computers. So it's just always there and accessible. How much CC do I have? That is a good question. Let's check. Right now I currently have 63,266 files of CC in my mods folder. Oh, I will tell you the size of that folder right now. 401 gigabytes. How much space does my laptop have? That's a great question considering how much CC I have. My laptop has 1.79 terabytes of space in general and I have used 439 gigs of that. So even with all my, or sorry, that's how much I have left. Just kidding. I have 439 gigs left on my laptop, which I think is kind of a lot for someone that currently has GTA, The Forest, Among Us, Sims with the 400 gigs installed. I feel like my laptop has pretty good storage. Like I feel like my headset falling on my head. I feel like that's a decent amount of storage. It, it's carried me for quite a while and it just continues to carry me. So I think that's, it feels like a pretty decent amount. How many expansion packs do I have? I own every single game expansion whatever else they're called packs in The Sims 4. When I first made over $1,000, when I finally got, I think it was when I got like my first real job. It was my first nine to five. I made $1,000 on my check, bought as many as I could. Before I paid for my phone bill, I bought every Sims pack that I could. And then my battery's dying. So if it dies, I'll fix that. And then whenever I made more money, I just kept buying until I bought every single one. Not very responsible, don't do that. But that's what I did and that's why I have them all. How do I come up with fun gameplays? It is so easy. I used to write poetry. I write books. I think I have a pretty creative brain. In general, I'm also a content creator. I make like short stories, short movies. It is not hard for me to come up with creative gameplays. I literally sit around and think vampires and then I'll make a gameplay or I'll be like, hmm, mermaids. And then I'll just make a gameplay off of it. I literally just think of like what's crazy but not really crazy because you can do it in Sims and then I'll just do it. Like we have so many different gameplays. I'll put like, I'll drop some like clippings and show you guys some of the gameplays we have, but I love them. I literally just come up with stuff randomly and I have me a time. 
you should just get be your most creative self when you play sims at the end of the day you literally it's all like a world in your eyes and you can do whatever you want how long does my game take to load not too long at all considering how much cc i have in and i really think the only thing that changed that was turning off that startup menu genuinely ever since i turned that off my game loads like that from my understanding that has to completely read all of your cc and that's why it takes up so much space and why it takes so long to open your game. Once I turn that off, I really don't have issues with like buffering or my game moving slow. That doesn't really happen at all. But I used to deal with that a lot on my old laptops and before when I had it on, it would take forever to load. Like I'm talking hours. I would open Sims two hours before I wanted to play. Now, maybe like 10 minutes on a bad day, maybe five. Where do I get my CC from? Genuinely, I just shop around. I don't have anywhere in particular. I used to pay for a lot of Patreons until I realized I was racking up so much ridiculous charges for that. So I just stopped, I canceled all of them. I think I literally follow one person and it's Randy Sims right now and Kiko Vanity. But after that, I canceled all of them. And now I just use like the Sims resource for the most. And I think like Simdom. Um, and then, or like Tumblr, I'll just go on Tumblr and search up exactly what, I, or Pinterest, Pinterest is really good. Pinterest, I'll be like Sims for women's belts and then i just go from there and they always have everything how do i remove cc from my game we're gonna go to the computer for this so what i've done is i've created a bunch of base sims which are essentially just naked sims with nothing on them i need to see how cc looks before i delete it on like a good looking sim so they do have a skin overlay on just make sure you always remove your skin overlay if you don't want it deleted when you do this before i like do anything you want to make sure nothing is on your sim at all they are completely bare. If they're not, you will delete CC that you don't want to by accident. And you need to make sure you do this for every outfit category. Make sure they don't have on a CC ear preset because it will delete that. See, all of these are just Maxis presets, Maxis presets. Make sure you remove any CC eyes too because I accidentally just deleted all of mine too. Like <laughs> doing this exact same thing. So like make sure you're, or you're just super careful when you go through them. So what you do is you're gonna put all of the stuff that you want to delete on your sim. Okay, I think I'm going to delete this face mask because I don't really like using face masks because I can never find like a body to match it. Also be very careful with this that you're not deleting meshes. I've done that a handful of times, deleted meshes accidentally. Okay, Loki, I couldn't find any more skin details that I didn't want in my game. I think I'm pretty happy with where I'm at with my CC. So now I'm going to go to the hair category and you're gonna do the same thing. Just put on all of the things you don't want in your game anymore. I think I've slowly been deleting some of these hairs because some of them are really great, like this one. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. But then some of them look a little bit crunchy, like this one. So I've been kind of deleting those ones. But this creator makes really great CC, like these ones are really good. I think they make some of my favorite braid styles. These are super cute. But sometimes like these um, frustrate me a bit, so I'm deleting stuff like that. So I'm gonna select that one. The color doesn't matter, I just want it to be black here. <laughs> and you're gonna go through all of your categories and do that. So I'm gonna build this really quick and I'll be back when I have all the stuff on. Okay, I'm back and she looks great. <laughs> She's gonna look a little crazy because it's all the stuff you don't want in your game. But once you've done that, you can also go ahead and delete presets as well. So what you're gonna do is click on the area, click on the preset that you wanna delete and then just leave it. And you're, you're simply just gonna leave it and it's going to populate in the next step that I show you. I don't think I have any that I want to get rid of though. I think I kind of already did that. Same with nose presets. You just click on what you don't want and don't bother it. I also think I like all of mine, so I think I'm gonna leave those. And the eyes, you do the same thing. All right, make sure you're not wearing any custom traits or anything like that. And what you're gonna do is save your sim. I always title them delete base, save that. Now you're gonna download something called the Sims 4 tray importer and we're gonna jump over there to use it. Once you're at the tray importer, it should have all of your saved households over here. You're gonna click on yours. Mine usually takes a long time to load. Once I, once I select CC, it's gonna show you the general information like when it was created, X, Y, Z, all that good stuff. You're gonna actually click CC and let that load. Okay, so it finally loaded. I don't have too many things on her right now. Like normally I have a lot more, so this takes quite a while to load so what you can do is whenever you click on an item it will show you in the corner what it is to make sure you're deleting the right item you can literally just click the arrow make sure it's all the stuff you wanted to delete that's all i'm doing i'm making sure this is just the stuff i want to delete and then under here is usually your overrides all of the stuff you probably don't want to delete like the teeth and the default feet and stuff like that i don't want to delete that stuff so I literally will just like minimize it because I want that to stay. You can either, you can highlight, 
Okay. You can highlight everything and right click show containing folder. This will show you where every single item is in your game. And then you can bulk delete them that way because it'll have, it'll have everything. Or what I like to do, because every time I do that, I delete things I don't want to delete. I will go through item by item and just delete them that way and just go from there to make sure I'm deleting just what I want to delete and that's it. Or sometimes I know that I don't want any more of these presets. You can just do that and then usually it'll pull up all of them. So you can select all of them and then delete them all. Oh, okay. Th I did forget. You cannot have Sims open when you do this. I didn't actually close mine out. So it's going to tell you this, but you should have your game closed out once you're finished what you're doing. And then this won't happen to you. It'll just delete everything. And then once you reopen your game, all of that stuff should be gone. And that's it. Back to the camera. Am I bleaching my eyebrows right now, the day of posting? Correct. But the slow and quiet footage rendered me answerless. Well, answered you, left you, hmm. Rendered you answerless about how I organize my CC, so I'm gonna show you that. Here's how I organize my mods folder. Certain mods cannot be more than one folder deep in your mods folder. For example, Team X tool cannot be in another folder in your mods folder. Better build by cannot be in your, cannot be in another folder. Wonderful Wims cannot be in another folder. Certain mods need to just be able to access your mods folder and that is as deep as they can go. Most creators will tell you if this is the case with their mod. So just be careful. Wonderful Wims is its own mod folder. Like I said, same thing with tool and better build by. I let those stay where they stay. However, I do have a separate folder for gameplay mods that are, that have the capability to be multi folders deep multiple folders deep for example such a great mod for custom fingernail positions by northern siberian winds perfect that can be in another folder pose player base mental relationships and pregnancy mc command more columns all of these mods are my core mods script mods mods that change my game i separate these from my normal mods folder so that whenever i need to update my mods whenever there's an update to the game it's super super easy because I know exactly where to find them all and usually you can just replace them or some creators will specifically tell you to remove the old one and add the new one regardless it's super easy because I organize them this way then I also separate default replacements they are on there they are also in their own folder just things like default teeth default feet I should start putting default eyes in here but honestly I kind of forget all the time I think I have animal eyes in here but things like that cast backgrounds backgrounds Things like that, things that I have like gentle cast lighting, separated folder, those things are on their own. And then if you ever wanna switch them out, you know where to find them. Same thing with my sliders, they're in a separate folder, only sliders in here, and whenever I download a slider, I will add it to here. The only thing about folders that I would say, I would say be super weary with folders because you need to remember that you have things in folders. These mod conflict detector usually will tell you if you have the same mod anywhere in your mods folder in general. But sometimes it can miss things, especially when things have like maybe it has a period at the end and the other version doesn't so it can't detect sometimes that it's the same file so just be careful when you're for example i already have if i already have this skin in my mods folder sometimes these platforms don't know that it's in your mods folder and your skins folder so just be careful with that i also separate my poses so they're easy to access and that is why update day is in patch day is never a struggle for me especially because i separate my traits Contrary to popular belief, traits tend to damage your game a lot more than like damaged clothes. They obviously can as well, just like script mods can. But traits are usually the culprit of UI issues whenever you can't click a button because it's like covered by something and it's corrupted. Every time it's that happened to me, it's been a trait mod. So always update your traits too. Those are also mods. And that's it. Bye. What do I do on patch day with all of my CC? Genuinely, I'll show you. I've made it so easy for myself. It's my saving grace. Patch day is always agitating but it's really become a breeze for me because i do this okay so this is my bookmarks on my google chrome and i've organized them down do you hear me organized down for this exact purpose okay so i have my applications for sims my in-game mods the websites i use my downloads things that i want to download but i'm not sure about Literally just because some of them are really big files and I don't know if I would have space for that. Tumblr blogs I like, Wix pages I like, Patreons I like, Pinterest pages I save, like search bars that I look up. 
I don't really know what's in here. Anyway, the, a lot of these aren't really important. We're really looking at a few. So I all as soon as it's patch day, I go to mods in game. I go to gameplay. And they're all here. All the mods in my game, they're here and they link me straight to their download pages to go and update my game on patch day. Patch day is so easy. I just go through and download all of the new versions, slap them in my game, and I literally open it up and play immediately. Saves my life. Do you hear me? And because they're in these separate folders, because I have them in the gameplay mods folder, I literally just download them and then slap them in here. Whenever I upload, upgrade, oh my gosh, whenever I update these, this mod, I delete them, put in the new one. It's so simple. How do I find and delete Corrupted CC? Now, this is, I think, a little bit different than the original question, which was, how do I remove damaged CC? How you find CC is a little bit different. You're gonna download the mod conflict detector. You literally just Google it and download it. That's how I found it. This is how I find bad CC that's not necessarily easy to find, like it's not in cast. Oh, and I forgot you can't open this while Sims is open. One second. You're gonna open the mod conflict detector, as I said, as I said. And it's going to kind of give you this automatic menu and you select your mods folder so that it knows what folder to read and it's gonna scan your whole game. It's going to usually auto select your mods folder but if it doesn't, you can literally click here and find it in your computer. Scan. And I did that and unselected my game. Whoops, and then I press okay and scan. Let her do her work. Okay, once everything's loaded up, I'll honestly usually go to mod type to make sure that I don't have Sims 3 mods in my game or Sims 2, sorry and there's none in here, so I'm good with that. Then I'll click the conflicts drop down, and it'll show you duplicate files, mod conflicts, and it'll be red for broken files. I don't have any broken files right now because I believe they usually come from the top. So right now we just have mod conflicts. Honestly, I never bother with those. I only delete duplicates. Click the file, right click it, show in folder. It's gonna do the same thing that the Sims 4 train porter did essentially, and then I just delete it. I don't like deleting it through here. Um, because I never felt like it really works or disabled, so I always just delete it. And if you click on it, it will show you the duplicate of it wherever else it is in your game. I usually just know, I always delete the one that has the parentheses and then the duplicate number. And if you pull this out, if you go across, you can usually see like, oh, this is duplicate because I have one in my skin folder and one that's not in my skin folder. So I'll just go through and delete. I'll delete the one that's in my skin folder because I never go in there. Show in folder, skin folder. Just make sure you don't delete the original doing this. So because I deleted the Crooked Cap Recolors 1, I don't need to delete the Crooked Cap Recolors normal. I deleted the Javon Skin 1, so I don't need to delete another Javon Skin or Javion. I'm gonna delete the Skin Overlay Javion Skin from here, so I don't need to delete the other one. You only wanna delete one or you'll delete everything. And then usually I'll refresh to make sure that I deleted all the right stuff. Okay, let's go to Conflicts again so that it pushes the duplicates to the top. I double tap it. Oh. We only have one left. Let's remove which one is in the skin folder, which is this one. Show in folder and then delete. And that's it. And now no more duplicates in my game. And the mod conflict detector does need to stay in the folder with all of its properties. So I usually just put it on my desktop in this folder called in this folder called The Sims 4. And it's just right here in its own folder. Mod conflict detector. Last but not least, do I have a Sims room in my Discord? Yes, I do. I know that that was a lot, but I've been putting off making this video for years now. I've constantly received these questions and I just get in my head a lot about filming content, especially, I don't know, YouTube content for some reason. So I finally buckled down and make it, made it. Let me know if there's any more questions you have about Sims or Sims 4 or my game in particular. I'm super open to answer them now. I think I wanna be a little more consistent about talking about another part of my entire personality on my YouTube channel because I think a lot of it's just vlogging. Whenever I play games, I don't know, I don't think I vlog that. So I feel like people are gonna see this and be like, what? But this is like a huge part of my life. So let me know if you have any more questions or anything at all. I'll try it. Maybe there'll be a part two to the video if I receive enough questions and we'll go from there. Bye. Make sure you like, subscribe, leave comments, turn on my notifications, do all that good stuff, and I'll see you guys next time. I always forget that. Make sure you leave comments. Comments are my favorite part about being a creator. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. I forgot I asked questions on my Instagram, so shall I insert this before you closed out the video? And I forgot there were a lot. What is my favorite mod of all time? MCC. That is the best mod ever. That is the mod that I think makes this game super creative. You can really do so much with how much customization you can do with that mod. I... Love that mod. I'll try to insert a clip really quick of just like quick little uses for it. That is the number one mod. Whenever there's an update, I don't update my game unless I can at least update the MCC. 
That's it. Best mod out. My favorite Black CC creators, Kiko Vanity, Brandy Sims, and I think Diverse King and Ebonics. I think they make a lot of my favorite stuff because they make a lot of like hair and accessories and stuff like that. And I love them. Do I keep my game on an external drive? I do not. I know that a lot of people say that helps. It doesn't really make a difference for me because my computer can handle it, but I think that sounds like something I probably would have done before with my older computer. But this computer seems like it really can handle how much nonsense I have on it, so I don't feel the need to. But I do have the drive. I actually just saw one that says, can you show me how to download CC? Of course, I'll show you right now. How to download CC. First of all, you're gonna find what you wanna download. So I'm gonna click on the CC. I think I'm downloading the little accessory for the horse. Literally click download. I do have a subscription with the sims resource so i don't have ads like you normally would but normally you would actually have ads for this platform unless you pay for the full subscription it just is insufferable for me without that so i simply paid for it i'm so sorry i couldn't take it um let's go here i want this download now it's downloading them to my computer i want these to download now once you've downloaded the cc it's gonna go to your downloads folder so here's the stuff i've downloaded that i'm gonna put in my game soon literally all you do is open up your game the sims 4 go to mods and drag a package file it must always say package file you cannot grab a compressed folder and put it in your in your game you should not usually just put folders that you download sometimes you'll download cc and it comes in a folder i always remove it from the folder and download it as a package file you're gonna drag it in your game i'm not gonna do that now because i always check when i transfer my game so what i'll do i'll select all of the stuff i want to put in my game I'll drag it into my game, but I'll have a folder of my game opened on the side so that it's highlighted whatever I've just dragged in. I'll open my game, make sure I can do everything, search in, search in build mode, do all that good stuff, and then if it works, I'm good, and then I'll do a uh, Sims, uh, then I'll do the mod conflict detector, check my game, and that's what I do before I actually permanently leave something in my game. If that explanation was confusing, let me know and I can talk about it a little more in depth. Any tips for a beginner that wants to start playing Sims but doesn't know where to start? Just start. It sounds so unhelpful, but just start. Just start making someone, just start clicking stuff, and I promise the creativity will just start to flow naturally. I think I started making myself on Sims, but I did not like that it didn't look like me, so I was like, I'm gonna make other people, and then I would just make random people. I'd make these random extravagant storylines, these random generations. It really does just come to you because you have full control. You can just do whatever you want. Best CC and mods for building tmx's tool and better build by i cannot think of another mod that i would need to survive this that i would need to survive playing this game those two clutch bye